I think Laura Hollick and I met around 2010, which is a bonkers long time ago. I've followed her work ever since, and I'm constantly amazed by these gorgeous art installations and the digital pieces that she produces. I had the privilege of going to her Canadian art studio for a movie shoot once, and I won't ever forget just how lush an experience it was. Besides being an award-winning artist, she's also a visionary guide and founder of Soul Art Studio, the new icon Global Vision Quest, and the Yoni Art Project, as well as her Soul Art Certification Program. Bravo TV created a documentary about Laura called The Artist's Life, Laura Hollick, and you can find her TEDx talk online called You Are the Art. You can find out more about her at laurahollick.com, including discovering her classes and courses that take you on your own creative journey, just like we're about to discuss. Hi, I'm Summer McStravick with flowdreaming.com, and welcome to this series, Scarcity Thinking Sucks, So Do Limiting Beliefs. So let's dissolve your limited thinking, dump those scarcity thoughts, own your power, and get you back on your feet, reaching for the stars. Over the course of these episodes, you'll hear from some really brilliant minds about ways they pinpoint and blow up limiting beliefs in their specific areas of expertise. So come with me on a journey into your mind and heart, and let's see what we can find in these very enlightening conversations. Laura, my dear. It is so good to see you. I just introduced you. Everybody knows we've known each other forever. Um, But I'm so pleased you're here. I'm thrilled to be here. Reconnect. Good, 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 good. And when I was putting together the the concept for this, um, this event, and I was thinking about, you know, who do I know who can speak to your limitations, your scarcity, and what is the opposite of that? And right to my mind came, creativity is the opposite of scarcity. Creativity is overflowing abundance. Um, Creativity means there are no limitations because when you're being creative, you sort of transcend all your limitations or you're not actually being creative, right? You're painting by numbers. So you came to mind is what I'm getting at. And I want to jump in that with you. You've done so much. You have so many programs and certifications and all project after project. And I know you work with people sometimes, right? In your certifications and so forth. And you've certainly facilitated a lot of events. Like I was in a cool movie of yours. Where do you see people kind of top out? Like where do they say, oh, I can't do that. I'm not able to do that. I'm afraid to do that. Like where do you Mm -hmm. experience that most in your world? Yeah. Well, I, I mean, I have my own experiences that I've had to navigate and then also people that I witness if I'm working with them or guiding them through different programs. And I think that there's some like cultural things that I think we all in some way deal with. So there's okay. cultural things as women, I would say, mm-hmm. where we were not fully safe in our body and in our own power it's changing, but that that just like there's an undertone where it's kind of like we we check ourselves, where it's like, wait a second, oh, yeah. how is this going to be perceived? So I think that that's a limitation that that women deal with. And I'm sure, you know, men too, but I think it's more women. Mm-hmm. And then on the, the creative side, there's that there's a lot of beliefs around the starving artists or artists are flakes or artists don't make money, creative people, oh, it's a hobby. Um, or they're then comparing not good enough, you know, so there, there's all these things that are just kind of in the culture that create a ceiling on, on what's possible and kind of put us in a box before we've even started, like kind of, you know, you go up to, to start something, or you think you've got an idea or a vision, or you want to dream into something. And then you kind of go up to the door and then you got to weed through all those to, you know, kind of liberate yourself. To, to have the freedom to be what you are, because creativity is really your essence. It's your soul. It's your soul coming through, and, and it's that life force energy. So it's like the liberation to really just be alive, to exist, to be yourself as you really are. So I think that there's a lot of limitations. There's a lot to weed through, a lot to navigate, to claim the, the wild primal power of just being a natural person. 
the wild primal power. I love that. What if you have a person who says, I haven't been touched in, in t- I have not been in touch with my wild primal power perhaps ever. And I don't know what I would do if I actually found it. And especially mm-hmm. what my family, kids, parents, spouse would, would do if I, if I went there. Do you ever yeah. encounter that? Like a kind of a well, fear that, of that's even the approach? Belief, right? That, yeah. That's, that's the belief where it's like, and I think it is more with women where it's like, they, they can't, they, 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 they feel they can't, they stop themselves. Cause it's like, I, I don't even have it. Right. Like that would be, that's like the belief. I, I, do I even have something that's there? Like, what, you know, and, and what will people think? What, what will come out? Is it going to be ugly? Is it going to be awful? Am I going to be embarrassed? And so it's like the, there's almost like a very thin thread of trust between sort of our, our humanity and our higher self in many ways. Like there's this thread. And so that the more we feel the lack or the scarcity or the limitation, the thinner the thread. But also, it also means the more possibility that you can have a huge breakthrough and a huge healing process and you, and you can have like an awakening, right? Because it's, it doesn't go away. It's just mm-hmm. that sometimes we haven't nurtured that, that sense of ourself between both. And the humanity part is the, the primal power because it's like, you know, earthy. And our higher self is the, the inspiration, the creativity, the kind of the sparks. It's in like a, a formless state and then humanity is in form. And so they, they have to work together, but sometimes they're like, they don't trust each other. And, and that's when we feel scarcity. That's when we feel lack and overwhelm and, and frustrated with our life. And like our life doesn't match who we are, like living kind of a fake life or a, a persona life. Yeah. yeah. I'm thinking back, like I wonder about your own journey when you started doing your art and you had to find a form that reflected who you were, not another mm-hmm. artist or another technique. I mean, yeah, you learn all that and pick it up. But you had to take take who you were and make that leap mm-hmm. into saying, I'm going to make a visual representation now of, of who I am. And I'm going to put it out there in the world and let people judge it and look at it. That has to be yeah. so scary. <laughs> you know, or and it in the beginning. <laughs> yeah. You know, it yeah. is and it isn't. And so I'll, I'll share a little bit of the, the story behind that to kind of create a framework to, to talk about that. Because when I was a kid, I just felt very disconnected and disembodied, like just mm. disconnected and disembodied. I, I was not resonating in my, my family dynamic. I wasn't, I, I just felt like my only safe place was turning in and then going into my imagination. And so I lived in my imagination. I I was, and that made me feel fantastic, but it was quite like an island, you know, it was insular. And one day I, when I discovered art, I had this moment where I was like, oh my gosh, you mean you can make your imagination real? (laughs) Like you can, this world, that's my home. I could make it real, meaning I could have a home in the, on this planet. And so to me, art and creativity was actually the way of creating safety because it was a way to make things that allowed what I knew inside of myself to be reflected outside. So it never felt like I never was worried what people thought of it because to me, it was just, it was the safest thing. Now, Mm -hmm. I do totally understand that feeling like when you put something out and then, you know, are people going to judge it? That for me almost came later when I was more t- approaching things from a business perspective and I had to consider other people. Yeah. I had to mm-hmm. consider what they thought about it. But the initial experience was safety, was mm-hmm. it was where I felt the safest, the most at home. It was home to me. So on that level, you know, maybe that's not a common experience, but it, it, you know, so that allowed me to flourish in my art and my creativity. But because Mm -hmm. I I really developed such a strong relationship with art and creativity and the creative process, then I kind of knew all the different angles of it. And then as I started working with people and hearing the struggles that they were having of like, just to even complete a project, because it was just torturous to go through the judgment and the fears, I, I really learned like how to support someone, almost midwife them 
through that birth canal because I was so familiar with it. I'm like, oh, it's okay. You know, yes, you can come. You're, you're not going to be, you're not going to die. It's okay. Keep coming. Like, <laughs> I'll put a midwife helping someone because I, yeah. I had gone through it like thousands of times through that mm-hmm. channel of creation that I, I could support people through. And then when someone felt the safety and they felt the trust it, like in, it, in themselves, because I'd be like, you've got it. It's okay. You can do this. I'm right here. You can do it. And then they, they built the trust in themselves. And then it's like, it's okay. Because then that thread between their higher self and their humanity, it like, it got strong. It was like secure, a secure attachment. And so then there's more fluidity in that. So yeah, my story is like art and creativity was like from the very beginning, safe, sacred, um, pure bliss, pure joy. It was home to me right from the Hmm. start. As opposed to it's an unsafe space because I don't know if I'm good at it and I don't know what other people are going to think if they see it. So yeah, that's really interesting that. And I never worried if I was to it. With that, yeah, oh, I never gosh. worried if I was good. Like, I just, it just, are you? Are you what? normal? Are you? <laughs> I didn't, until later, but in the beginning, because I was like disconnected, that was maybe the saving grace of being disconnected. Yeah. There's the blessing in a very painful wound. <laughs> yes, being yeah. disconnected, it's like, well, it didn't matter. What it was like, it was my own thing, and and then I did because I spent so much time there, and I think anyone who spends time doing anything, a mm-hmm. lot of time doing, you're going to get good at it. Yeah. Doesn't mean, you know, someone may not become the Olympian or may not become the Oscar winner, but you'll get good at whatever you put your energy and your love into. That's and I true. did, I put my love into it. And so then I started getting attention for that yeah. and it, it built connections. So, so the art, created another layer of safety where I could connect with people. Mm -hmm. Uh, And I was excited to share it because it felt the most resonant to who I am. Like maybe I wouldn't be able to talk and explain myself, but I could show something I was doing. And Uh so again, yeah, there was a lot of safety there, but I do have compassion. I, and I did feel later the, those layers of the judgment and the layers of like, oh my gosh, what's this, what, if somebody doesn't like it, it felt threatening because then when I connected it with my business, then it's almost like survival got woven into it. Mm-hmm. And so then I, I, I understand the feeling where there is a threat, where mm-hmm. if you're doing something and someone else doesn't like it or they have a judgment, it can literally feel like it affects your own ability to survive, your ability to, to exist in the world. So yeah. that that is something to navigate. But because I'd had the, the early childhood experiences where I was really fighting for my existence in many ways, right? Because I, I was so isolated. I, I learned how to fight for my existence. I mm-hmm. had a skill set of how do you fight for your existence through judgment? Yeah. It doesn't mean it doesn't hurt, but I could, I could still find my belief in myself mm-hmm. even when, and there's been some nasty criticism for sure. Um, but now, yeah, it's it hurts, but it doesn't flatten me, doesn't wipe me out. And I think that that's also part of the, the building of, of our own root is when mm-hmm. even in the face of a challenge, even in the face of the thing that we might fear, we learn how to still have our own root. To me, that's like yoni power. That's like the feminine root to have our own root, yeah. even in the face of a challenge. And I think that that's part of what we're healing on the planet right now, because women, Mm -hmm. our root has been given over to another person, whether it's a man in marriage or whatever, like just by the way that it's structured, you know, if a Mm -hmm. woman gets married and she takes on the name of a man, she's like the property of her existence is the property of someone else. Now that again, it's changing, but it's just in the the psychology, the belief system of what create, how women have survived over years. I mean, we're just beginning to really make money and and support ourselves. But part of claiming our power is like finding our root in -hmm. the face of a challenge. Mm -hmm. And and then it's like, it can't wipe you out because it's like, you find out you're okay. Mm -hmm. Even if the thing that's hard is sitting right there staring at you. (laughs) And, and I think that that's, that's part of the work that 
that we all have to do is to really strengthen both our root or like yoni for women and our ability to hear our spirit and connect like our crown and our root, those two Mm -hmm. roots being strong. So we are like, we have a channel that we can stand up like a tree. You know, we've, we are supported within that connection. So I love that you're bringing up this talk topic around scarcity because that's really the invitation that when we feel the limitation and we feel that there's a scarcity and we feel threatened, our survival is threatened. Like that's the invitation to eat the strength in something, whether yeah. it's your root, your yoni, or it's your crown and your connection to spirit. It's just saying, you know what, this needs to be looked at. It's yeah. Some like part of me is disconnected. Yeah. So go yeah, figure it out. That's what the love. scarcity means. As opposed to yeah. I, I exist in scarcity and it's something I have to surmount or overcome. No, it's an invitation is what you're saying. It's totally. An and it is something to navigate. You know, it can feel mm-hmm. like overcoming um, <laughs> because, you know, when you're faced with it, it it's, <laughs> it's hard. Yeah. You know, life yeah. is hard. I, I've just, <laughs> I, I know what, this, right? There's, yeah. I am going to do something strange. I'm going to get up okay. right now for like 10 seconds. So okay. just- and I'm going to surprise you with something. So everybody just okay. hang on. I, I will okay. be right here. And I just realized I should have had this ready and I didn't, but you, I'm just sitting here looking at this thing on my wall. Just hold on one second. Okay. Yeah. Yeah. Oh, I'm curious now. What is it? <laughs> wah, wah. Can you see this? Do you see this? Yes, I can. <laughs> oh my god! What a picture! <laughs> it's your view. It's like a birth canal. That's like a yoni right do you there. Recognize this? I yes, do. Yes. Yeah, I, I was thinking that as soon as I saw the background picture, I'm like, I think I've got one of those hanging on my wall. I think Laura helped me make this darn thing, and I. <laughs> And I did, you guys, I made this with Laura in her studio, the one you're looking at right now, years ago. And um, it was part of a, a, can you believe I had to bring this home through security? And they made me stick it through one of the x-ray scanners. And I thought, oh, it's going to break. It's going to break. So I had to squish that yoni, like the fit. And oh my. Anyway, I still have it. (laughs) Isn't that great? That's amazing. Oh, that just lit me up. That's so amazing. But it made me think what we did there is you, so we're talking about kind of the experience of what this means and why we need to do this. But when I was there with you, you had us doing things like having giant sheets of paper and we had to draw representations of ourselves. Um, We had to create something using, you know, fabric and twigs that represented (laughs) ourselves. And it was just like you were constantly saying, make yourself. Who are you? Draw yourself. Weave yourself. You know, take, and then you had us take photos of us, you know, in these beautiful colors. And it's like, if you were this color, who would, how would you be in it? And I just thought, God, I feel so incredibly creatively juiced up. It's like she's taking the inside of me and making me show it on the outside of me. And when I show it, I claim it as opposed to just not really knowing what's in there. And I realized mm. in hindsight, I didn't really know what you were doing when you were doing it. But in, in hindsight, I'm like, yeah, she had crafty. She was very crafty about that. <laughs> yeah. But you are. I mean, it's, it's, it's gorgeous. <laughs> so share with me like how you do that with people, how you figured out this kind of method for transcending mm. or showcasing or drawing out. Yeah. So, I mean, gosh, there's there's layers to yeah. all of that. But what mm-hmm. you're speaking about is really, it's the, the birthing of yourself, right? It, it's like, it's connecting to the deepest place that you can access within mm-hmm. who you really are at that soul essence level. And then kind of feeling into it, right? Because it, no one else has ever seen it. Mm-hmm. So it's not like yeah. there's some reference outside, it's not like it's like, oh, okay, yeah, it's kind of like um, this. Well, I mean, sometimes that we can grasp at that to kind of give a clue for sure, but it's it's your unique sacred geometry of, of your being. And so it's like learning how to, to go in and turn the, the attention in to, to hear and feel and sense and then finding ways, well, how can this be expressed? 
and then Mm -hmm. bringing it out. It's kind of like spiraling in and spiraling out. So in that, in many ways, it's super, super simple. Spiral in, journey in, connect with yourself, and then express it out. That's the simplicity. But the, the complicated part is more that we have landmines <laughs> within ourselves mm-hmm. on the journey in and the journey out. So the creative process becomes how do we, we move and navigate through connecting within? And then once we make a connection, how do we bring it out? Like, do we have to go through mom's belief system and this teacher's belief system and whatever? Or does it just have like a free passage out. So I think that the process is the simplicity is like, okay, let's connect within ourselves, and then let's bring it out in the world, express it through a color, express it through an outfit, express it through a dance, express it through whatever you want, twigs or fabrics. And so that's simple, but Mm -hmm. every single person doing that is going to go through like a healing and a rebirth and a soul retrieval because the, that channel that you're traveling is really the way you experience your life. (laughs) Like it's like it goes through everything that you are to do that very simple thing. So kind of brings back to in the beginning, just this idea of kind of like, what do I experience in, in myself or other people? It's like all of that, you know, what do they feel when they connect with themselves? And then what do they feel when they want to go put it out? And, and they, it's all the belief systems of their whole lineage line, their whole soul contract, their everything. And so it's, it's like, it's incredible, really. The inside me is now somehow put into actual physical form as an outside me. And in that process, there's some healing that takes place. There's recognition For sure. and there's healing and then assuming ownership, right? In our, yeah. in our power from that. Yeah. I just totally. love this process. Oh my God. I, I, I want to, <laughs> you're making me want to come up and make more art with you. <laughs> Actually, it's not well, art. I'm going to make me on my inside, take a Polaroid, a little soul Polaroid and stick it out there. <laughs> totally. Well, and something that was so cool about the process that we did when you were here was there was a photo connected to it. And mm-hmm. on, I love working with photos. To me, that's kind of the embodiment. And when you literally see yourself and so in my own journey, like how that started before the selfie and before people had cell phone cameras, you know, I was, you know, back in school days, like super, super shy and always scared of people looking at me. Like I could do my art and do my things in my, by myself. But as soon as someone would look at me, I'd be in a cold sweat of terror. And so I started to try to kind of get over it, but also a curiosity of like, well, what do I look like? Like, who am I? (laughs) I started taking pictures of myself and it was a way to see that reflection. And it's actually much deeper. Like that might sound shallow, but it goes even deeper because in the development of the brain, when we're a child, a baby, the way our mother looks at us is how we learn how to see ourself. Hmm. And so we, when we're wanting to know who am I, Initially, we are looking through the belief system and the lens of our mother, and that's how we see ourselves. But if we're really wanting to express our essence, our soul, our uniqueness, we have to learn how to see ourselves and be in almost reprogram the brain and the developmental stages of the brain to see who we are and have that reflection. And when we get that, it's all, it's all of a sudden like you, you do feel like you exist. It's like, there she is. I see you. I see you. There she is. It's like, it's like being wait. It's waiting to be seen for who you really are. And then when you get that glimpse and it's, it, it can activate a huge detox process even because it it will start to like spit out the layers of the stuff that aren't, aren't that person. And it also can be like a, yeah, like a a whole conversation about like selfies that just, uh, that could be a whole hour of, of yeah, talk the selfies. because you, you know, in your art, you are 500 different women, but they're all an aspect of you. They're like a, a facet of a crystal reflecting a different color or, or mood or, or moment, but it's all still you. And we see that, you know, I, I have a teenage daughter and every, every selfie, every time she takes a picture of herself, it's got to look a certain way. It's got to look like the Instagram way. There's a pose, there's a facial expression. And I, 
I just think, well, I'm, I'm glad she's creating something that's making her feel proud of herself, the way she sees herself. But what if we can take, can we take some limitations? Can we take some limits off this? Can we, you know, selfies like they're, God, they're so, ugh, they can be so rewarding and so destroying at the same time. Absolutely. And what you're, yeah. And what you're saying oh, is sure. make them always be rewarding, right? Well, it depends on where it's coming from. Right. So a selfie, if it is for the judger, then it's not going to create a healing. But if the image to see yourself is to express and reflect who you are in that the vulnerability of your own raw power. Mm -hmm. then that's going to heal you. That's going to reconfigure your life. But a selfie, if someone's holding it up and they're doing the little side thing and and the little kiss and the, you know, it's cute and it's fun. But again, that's almost like mirroring and mimicking what Mm -hmm. they've, someone's already seen. Not necessarily, and maybe it is their own expression, but if you've seen it a hundred times and a hundred different people have done the same kind of pose and, you know, you hold your body in a certain way, it's not the personal exploration. It's yeah. not the soul spiral in to reach something to then be like, whoa, I just, I just hit gold and let it come out. There's a very different. So when I think of the selfie, yeah. depending on where it's coming from and who, who it's for, that determines the healing or the creation power that that image will have. Mm-hmm. Yeah. God, I love that. I'm glad we we touched on that because I've got a lot to think about it. You sort of defined the the purpose between a healthy selfie and an unhealthy selfie. That is a tongue twister. <laughs> it's, like a, it's like a shadow yeah. selfie, right? A shadow yeah. selfie. And yeah. sometimes you have to do that to get to know the shadow. It's kind of like get to know who who is someone playing yeah. into, uh-huh. right? Like, are, do you, yeah. who do you want to like you? Yeah. How, are you doing it because you're going to get a like? And like, what's it for? Because that's the motivation. That's the inner point that they're coming from. And so, and there's nothing wrong with that. Like if that's what the person is choosing to do, but on the level that we're talking about to access that kind of deep healing, that deep creation, like the creation yeah. energy, yeah. there the is yoni- a deeper energy, place to hit. Which is doing the the yoni art work that you do. I mean, that is a whole other powerful level of self acceptance, self acceptance, self exploration. I mean that that takes the selfie to a new level. <laughs> you could say, yeah, it's a different kind of selfie. <laughs> yeah, the yoni. Of, art. I don't know you, if you can see I, it behind me, but there's there's yonis. These are all different types of yonis. Um, yes, but yoni art. Yeah, someone's actually doing a selfie of their yoni. That's a whole other level. I guess on that, I almost think of Yoni being almost like, I don't know if archetype would be the right word, but Mm -hmm. kind of like how does someone experience their their raw, wild, primal power? How do they experience it rather than exactly what does that look like? So Mm -hmm. it's, it's funny because I think that the Yoni is something that's almost lives a little bit in the the mystery of not being seen. Mm, and that's yeah. kind of part yeah. of it. Yeah. And mm-hmm. so when I think of the face, sure. you know, the face comes out and that's like what a selfie is. But the Yoni, the, the way to do a portrait of Yoni is almost very different. It's sort of like, how do you experience it? Mm-hmm. versus, okay, like what, what are the Visually, folds like? Yeah. <laughs> mm-hmm. I've got a bunch behind me, but they're kind of like archetypal and more symbolic. Yeah. Yeah, they literal. almost look like third eyes to me. Is yeah, what some I keep of them thinking. do have third eyes because mm-hmm. we do get a lot of intuition from our, our primal mm-hmm. root for sure. Yeah, yeah. Oh, gosh. Okay, so we are wrapping <laughs> up already. Oh, I just there's so many little threads. I just want to follow each one in a different direction. But um, I know people are very intrigued and they want to figure out how do I, how do I find my true self and express her or him or them Um what do people do if they're curious about you and they want to learn more and do you have something for them? Yeah, for sure. So there's so many different angles that we could, you know, connect with ourselves. but, you know, with the Yonis behind, and as I've been speaking about that, uh, a way to, to kind of make that connection, to connect within, to your, the intimacy of your own privacy of, of who you really are. I think the yoni art is a way to, to access that deeper intimate self. 
And so I do have a quiz and it's called, what is your Yoni personality type? And, <laughs> yeah, that's and that kind of gives some clues of like how, how yeah. you, you access your own truth. Yeah. You access your primal creativity, your ability to birth. And there's, you know, some clues within the different personality types. So I have a quiz um, shall I give the link to that or would it be included? No, it'll on the be, group? yeah, it's going to be included. So if you guys okay. are listening on the podcast, um, it should be there. Just, you can, there'll be a link to, to get it no matter what. And if you're listening on our event, again, you're going to click the link and it's going to take you to, um, uh, eventually you'll, you'll find your way to your website, lauraholic.com, which will also be there for everybody. And I said it in the introduction as well. So, Good. Oh, I love this. I love this. I want to find out what my creative birth style is. Um, so yeah, I'm gonna I'm gonna click that link too, Laura. <laughs> Though I think I have a, I think I have some clues already with my my beautiful piece of wood and, and fabric yeah, art that I just showed that. everybody earlier. Yeah, I realize yeah, that, that if a person's sense. listening on a podcast, they're like, "What in the world is she showing people right now?" That was certainly disappointing. <laughs> so <laughs> it's a giant pink piece of yoni fab, fabric arts big pink yoni basically that's what i just showed it's a pink yoni <laughs> it's a pink yoni it's your it's well and so one other final thought on that is like yeah so your creative energy is your birth field creation yes. birth field so if you want to create something it's mm-hmm. a, like a birth field so there's a sacred mm-hmm. geometry to the way creativity moves through each person and so Yoni in the way that we, you know, there's a symbolically, the way that we will create something is similar to the way that we will birth something. So it's all interconnected. So that's like your creation channel. But when I think of what you created in that, that magenta sculpture that you showed, and if you can't see it on the yeah. podcast, then you have the mystery of your imagination to fill in the, <laughs> the pieces of that. <laughs> Wonderful. All right, Laura. Well, thank you so much. I love to seeing you again. And thank you for coming back. And I said we had to keep catching up every decade or so, you know, and let's keep it going. Mm-hmm. <laughs> I'm kidding. <laughs> much more frequent than that. And everybody, um, uh, I hope that you will, you know, go ahead and learn a little bit more about Laura and her work and all the different programs she has for you to kind of open and awake all these, uh, open and awaken all of these different aspects of you. So thanks a lot, Laura. Thank you.